Welcome to the Gould's Water Technology video training series. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about common IPC commissioning tips. There are eight common areas of your IPC to inspect when setting up your IPC or when experiencing performance issues. If the drive is powered and the pump does not start, and the display indicates standby, make sure a start jumper wire is installed or there is another start device installed in either Terminal 12 or 13 and Terminal 18. Remember, Terminal 12 and 13 are both 24-volt terminals, so either can be used in conjunction with Terminal 18. To use the pump protection No Water Loss of Prime, Install a jumper wire between 29 and 32 to allow the pump to restart once it trips. The LCP by default shows the actual pressure and set point. If your display does not show these parameters, it is likely that the up or down arrows have been pressed. Cycle through the display options by using the up and down arrows until your desired data is displayed on the LCP. Note that the up and down arrows are not used to change the set point. The set point parameter is in the Genie. If you want to change the set point after exiting the Genie, select Quick Menu, My Personal Menu, and then input your desired set point. The dip switches located behind the LCP must match the corresponding feedback device. When the dip switches need to be changed, the power must be off. For example, when using a 4 to 20 milliamp transducer on analog input 53, the dip switch for A53 must be set to 1, which stands for current. When using a 0 to 10 volt DC transducer on analog input 54, the dip switch for A54 must be set to U, which stands for voltage. Note, your IPC may have the dip switch on A53 permanently fixed to 1. The IPC requires a three phase motor which may run backwards. Therefore, proper rotation must be confirmed. For surface mount motors, confirm the rotation by selecting Hand and observe the rotation of the pump. Compare the actual rotation with the rotation arrow on the pump and or motor. If the rotation is incorrect, disconnect the power and wait the appropriate time for the power to dissipate. The wait time is in the IPC instruction manual. After the wait time, swap any two leads on the output. This will reverse the previous rotation. For submersible pumps, the correct rotation yields the highest flow and head. A factory reset or an initialization can be performed to restore the controller back to default settings. There are multiple ways to perform this function. To use the three-finger reset method, remove power from the unit and wait for the LCP to turn off. Next, press and hold Status, Main Menu, and OK at the same time. While holding down the buttons, apply power to the unit. Parameter 1422 Operation Mode can be also used to perform the factory reset function. Refer to the IM for the details of this method. The factory default setup for the IPC utilizes a 300 PSI 4 to 20 milliamp pressure transducer wired to analog input 53. Wire the white lead to 53, the brown to a 24 volt supply, 12 or 13, and the bare wire to the chassis. Pinch the bare wire between the transducer cable and the strain relief. 
The pressure transducer requires a quarter-inch female NPT fitting for installation. Install the pressure transducer with the electrical connector pointing up to avoid clogging the pressure port with debris. Install the pressure transducer in a straight run of pipe away from elbows or turbulence. For optimum pressure control, install the pressure transducer in the same straight run of pipe as the pressure tank. Ensure the pressure transducer is within 10 feet of the pressure tank. Installing the pressure transducer far away from the pressure tank may result in pressure oscillations. Do not install the pressure transducer in a location where freezing can occur. A frozen pipe can cause damage to the pressure transducer. A diaphragm tank is used to cushion the pressure system during startup and shutdown. It should be sized to at least 20% of the total capacity of your pump. For example, if your pump is sized for 100 gallons per minute, then size your tank for at least 20 gallons total volume, not drawdown. Precharge your tank to 15 to 20 psi below your set pressure. Use the higher tank precharge setting if the system drifts over 5 psi at a constant flow rate. The maximum working pressure of the Hydro Pro diaphragm tank is 125 psi. Exceeding the working pressure of the tank can cause the tank to rupture or explode.